We are recording Bone Tomahawk. So you've mentioned this movie a few times before, and I never really prioritize watching it beyond just like knowing that we would do an episode about it in the future. Mm -hmm. Just because I know a lot of times when we do an episode, I would like to see it for the first time and kind of react as opposed to, oh, it's something I've already seen. You know, I kind of lose that like I go into it with biases or, or outstanding opinions or whatever. But for future reference, if you had said in this Old West movie, Jack from Lost, Ed Warren, Captain Ron, and John C. Riley's dad from Step Brothers <laughs> go out to kill the Indians who killed Captain Spaulding, <laughs> I would. the only thing you would have heard is the door shut behind me That's as I, I rushed out to go watch this movie immediately. <laughs> you really buried the lead on I this I did. One. I screwed the pooch on that one. Um but it's also like a learning, you know, a lesson of like, if, you know, if I recommend it, there's a good chance you're going to like it. <laughs> I'll take it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy. It, um, so I had actually seen this before and I forgot that Captain Spaulding was in it. Yeah. And I get excited every time I see him, you know, just even when we did, um, what was the movie from the 70s? Spider Baby. Spider Baby. Um, yeah. Even when we did that, it's like, yeah, I just get pumped to see him. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. And then it was also like, you know, we've been into Westerns lately a lot. And so it was like, this just fits like exactly yeah. what we were wanting uh, of Western horror film. Yep. Yeah, this puts me in the mood to go now find like a Kung Fu horror film. That's a good point. I feel like that should come next. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this one, it was, like I said, my first time to see it, I knew that it was uh, Western horror, which I feel like we haven't really seen much of, so I was excited about that. But also, this was one that was at Fantastic Fest that I feel like got quite a bit of talk around that time, and we've talked about that before. It's a film festival in Austin where typically the content is meant to be sort of controversial or to like stand out almost uh like how extreme can you be mm -hmm. and so I, I was curious to see sort of where this one went in that and i think we definitely got a few scenes but on the whole it was actually i think it maybe felt a little more western than it did horror to me for yeah. the most part i think so, so too yeah yeah but Anyway, I will introduce it, then you can do your fun facts, and then we will get into the bone-splitting details. <laughs> In 2015, RLJ Entertainment brought us Bone Tomahawk, a Western horror film written and directed by S. Craig Zoller, who has an ab absolutely epic ponytail in his Wikipedia page picture. With an ensemble cast that includes Matthew Fox, Sid Haig, Kurt Russell, Patrick Wilson, and Richard Jenkins, this star-studded picture tells the story of a group of men in the Old West who leave town to rescue a woman kidnapped by a mysterious tribe of cannibal Native Americans. Bone Tomahawk was made on a budget of $1.8 million and brought in under $500,000 at the box office. It can be rented for streaming on Amazon Prime Video. That was also kind of a bummer because when I initially recommended it, it was for, you know, just your standard subscription to mm -hmm. Prime. Yeah. So when we rented it for this podcast and, and so we paid for it and then hit yeah. play, it picked up from where I last stopped watching it, even uh -huh. though it was not <laughs> paid for. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, crazy. that's funny. Yeah. Trying to make back some of that budget, I guess. Yeah. So, so what'd you learn about this one? So, two minor kind of facts about this. So this is partially inspired by um, H. Ryder Haggard's uh, The Lost Race Tales and The Virginian. Um, that's according to an inter interview with uh, S. Craig Zoller. Um, and that was at the 2015 film London Film Festival where he talks about that. Um, I haven't researched much of those two, uh, but I'm going to just curiosity see how much is picked up from that actually or not uh actually two more facts so one more is the holster that matthew fox has in this is uh this very similar to the same as johnny ringo in tombstone tombstone mm -hmm. is iconic 
western film for those people who don't know I highly recommend you watch it it also has Kurt Russell in it uh, among other uh, famous actors and actresses talking about uh, old Sam What's the guy's name that everyone like? Oh, like every mom likes. Uh, uh, dude, he has the deep voice and the mustache. Anyway, it has him in it. Anyway, long story short, same style holster. It's kind of a uh, gunslinger holster. So to speak. Talking about Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Good lord, I could picture him. Like every mom loves Sam Elliott. That's like a fact. Just for the record. That's not uh, this fact, but it is. Uh, And the last thing, so Arthur O'Dwyer, he carries a Merwin and Holbert revolver, um, which I actually looked up because I wasn't too familiar with this. I'm really into Western, so I try to, like, know about, you know, the guns and stuff like that. And oddly enough, I hadn't heard about this. I watched some videos on it. But um, it wasn't, like, a well-known gun, um, Colt had like the you know peacemaker and uh, smith and wesson had their own i can't remember what it is now um but this one was the uh merwin holbert revolver and it is basically just like supposedly was a really um durable pistol um i really like the fact that they put in they added that to this film because it was like a minor detail. They didn't have to. They could have found like a Colt Peacemaker replica easily. You know, like, you know, those are a dime a dozen. But they were like, no, we're going to make this a little original. And so they threw that in there. And that is all the facts I have for this film. Nice. So I noticed a lot of your facts had to do with sort of Western history and also like other western movies Mm -hmm. and i think that's a very fitting uh assessment of this one in that it really did feel more like a western with some horror elements mixed in than it did like a horror movie with some western elements mixed in which is kind of more what i was expecting yeah same um well i guess when i initially watched it it was it was the same um it i was also worried that it was going to be like a typical like cowboy and Indian mm-hmm. type sure. movie. And yeah, like it, the, the godless savages mm-hmm. are uh, yeah. out in the edges of the town in the darkness yeah. and attack at night. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it kinda ended up being a little bit like that, but um I felt like there was a a little bit more respect in the fact that it wasn't um you know, just saying the Cherokee tribe or anything like it was sure. like kind of a made up tribe of, um, it, I guess it was be not that much different than like the descent, you know, with, yeah. with those, um, walkers or whatever we called it, those guys. And they definitely drew a distinction between this clan or whatever yeah. and like normal native American tribes. Yeah. And, and once you realize that that's not the case, cause like they literally have tusks coming out of their face you're like, oh, okay, this is like a different, a different situation. Yeah, almost like a supernatural type creature. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say, technically, the real horror in this is at one time, those people probably roamed the land, United States, in this movie's world. So the real horror is people from England that came over and took their land and now they're the enemy for killing these people. You step on my territory, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, eat you. You don't mow another man's lawn. Yeah, a hundred percent. I eat arms. I'll eat legs. Yeah. So that's the real horror of this film. So yeah, I, it was hard to know from the beginning, like what type of movie it was gonna be, because the very opening scene was like a guy getting his throat cut while he was asleep on the ground. And then you have the the robbers, and that was Sid and his friend. And then you hear people coming on horseback, so they run to hide, and then they presumably end up, you know, finding this lost clan and getting attacked. And that's kind of the setup. And so from there, though, there was not any real, like, horror anything for, like, an hour. 
yeah. it felt like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely a, a Western at that point. Yeah. And so it was kind of building up, like, the town and the characters in the town, and it, it felt very much like kind of some of your standard, like, Western movie character archetypes. Because you've got kind of the the tough sheriff and then, you know, the the bumbling deputy. You know, just all, yeah. all of those kind of familiar faces that you're used to seeing. And then things didn't really pick back up until the attack on the stable boy that also resulted in the prison. So I thought, I thought it was interesting at that point because it seemed like they had come back for the guy that got away from the, the beginning, yeah. the guy that was in jail. But I didn't really quite understand what was their motivation for doing that. Other than it sounded like they said they, he, they thought he had somehow like desecrated their lands or something. Yeah. But I didn't quite understand what was going on there. Did you? Well, I think it was because they like walked through, like at the beginning, him and it was said like they walked through like their burial or whatever. They walked through that burial ground. That's what I thought it was. Oh, it was okay. For. Gotcha. Now, in that same, in the, you know, in the same conversation, like it's difficult for me to like think why didn't they just walk around because it was legit like while you were looking at it they're like we'll just walk through it but it's like literally it's like 10 steps to your left and you Mm -hmm. could just go around but yeah it was i i thought it was just walking through that little burial sacred land thing at the beginning where they're like we gotta get him yeah okay And, and it i don't know i that was so for me as a fan of horror going into this movie the most interesting thing by far was the the Indian clan mm-hmm. like these like somehow almost like superhuman uh, just like death cannibals <laughs> is the best way you could describe them like they're just like they're out to kill people and eat them and they don't really seem to have a lot of regard for each other and they're just gonna you know wreak havoc and tear people apart and eat what's left and that's a really scary concept for a villain because you don't really have a lot of like rhyme or reason to it it's just like they're pretty much unstoppable and you don't know how many of them they are and there is no limit to their brutality and i really wish that the movie had leaned into that more because that was basically the the thing I was most interested in or the thing that, you know, made me lean forward in my seat is anytime they were on screen, things were intense and scary and engaging. And then the rest of the time, it was just kind of like the boys hanging out. Yeah. I think it, I think it was like, you know, it was supposed to build the suspense about it, but my, Mm -hmm. my struggle with going too deep with, with those, like the, whatever you call them, the monsters in this film. Yeah. Was that at the end of the day, they were relatively easy to kill. Right. So it's like you you could shoot them or, you know, like they bled easily Mm -hmm. or they, you know, bled like, you know, like a human. And so it's like, well, they technically have like, you know, stealth skills and stuff like that. That seem like above average. But other than that, they look like, you know, like I said earlier with the people, the monsters of descent. So it's like, it's kind of difficult to like get too in depth with them because you want like that unstoppable monster, but being yeah, that this like is a unknown in the mystery. Yeah. But yeah. being that this is a Western though, you know, you have to kind of know that the good guys prevail for majority of you know western so it's kind of like i don't know if it's just because it's you know i like the old school ones or what Mm -hmm. so you kind of knew that had to happen you knew it had to be a stoppable force um but it was just trying to figure that out i do wish that they incorporated more of those like instead of running like into the bandits yeah it would have been cool if it was them you know that you know, maybe stole the horses and, and like there was missed opportunities that they could have capitalized on. Um, yeah. Like why did they never attack at night? That would yeah. have been a really cool scene. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, cause you know, super dark, you don't really know yeah. what's going on. And yeah. Um, 
that could have that could have worked to their benefit. I don't know why they wouldn't have added something like that if they were legit trying to go for a western horror film. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm saying is like to me it didn't feel like super embracing of of horror. Yeah. Uh, to me, it really felt more like a Quentin Tarantino movie, mm. where you had like these long uh, scenes with dialogue between characters, because it, it, it didn't even really have like a lot of. It wasn't like it was trying to be a super detailed, complicated plot line. Mm-hmm. It was just like most of the movie was spent on the interactions between the characters, and that's how they kind of developed them, and you know tried to draw you in or keep your interest. And then occasionally there would be a scene with like a lot of action and danger, which feels very Tarantino esque to me. Yeah. And so that, you know, looking at it from that perspective, like some of the performances I thought were really good. <laughs> like I thought um, the old man, the backup deputy, was pretty hilarious a number of times throughout the movie. Yeah, he served his purpose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then, you know, on the other side, you know, Patrick Wilson's accent kind of came and went and wasn't good when it was there yeah (laughs) so but i i was really really confused because i felt like this had like a you know a 30 million dollar budget cast but like a 1.8 million dollar budget kind of script yeah which was weird like i i don't understand how he got that many big names because they all had to do this cheap like super super cheap Mm -hmm compared to what any of them would have pulled you know in a a normal movie so they must have really there must have been something about the idea of this one that they all found very appealing and i'm kind of curious like how do you sell big name actors on a smaller budget project like this that's kind of outside the mainstream well i could tell you for sure how what i why i think it it is how they could sell that is because it was filmed in 21 days Oh really? So, yeah. So even if they made that. like, you know, a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, that's really good for twenty you know, twenty one yeah. twenty one days worth of work, considering you're not working all those days. But yeah. that's you know, for me, you know, going into this like, and being the Western fan, like it seems like they do like the the you know, and I'm thinking of like, you know, El Dorado from you know with John Wayne and Rio Bravo, which is the same movie. Um, and you know a few others are like big jake like they're it's the same formula like they borrow those formulas so you have like the you know interesting thing happen at the beginning and then it's a whole bunch of talking and like mm-hmm. uh I, I would almost say like intense like moments like where you think like are they gonna get caught or you know whatever's going on and then it builds up to the finale which is like that's the formula fight, but, but what yeah and but yeah. the problem with this with me was they they didn't have that huge like gunfight like which i would think is like kurt russell's character at the very end when he's you know shoots you know when he's going to kill the males of the you know of that group yeah like y- y- we didn't see it and so it's like yeah. well y- like that's t- that's a terrible ending you know that's a terrible thing there if you're gonna build up if i'm gonna spend two hours of my time watching this over two I, hours. yeah yeah then yeah. i want like some intense you know like i want some action there but instead it, it they they kind of missed the mark there so they not only missed the mark for horror they missed the mark for western um but when it did come to the dialogues i i will say like it it just was normal like i didn't have any issue with it because it was just like oh this is you know the talky part of this film yeah um where I would prefer they would be, you know, there'd be more action, but, um, but the frustration for me is that missing the mark on, like, if you're going to say this is a Western horror, at least make it one or the other without just saying, well, they are technically cowboys and it is in the 1800s (laughs) and you know, like, well, yeah, okay. No shit. That's a Western, you know, Westerns have their own style and horrors have style and you're trying to combine them and you didn't like you failed. Um, yeah. Well, and I think one thing we see, because I, I mean, obviously I'm a fan of genre films in general. Like I, I really like a movie that is in a genre that fully embraces it and like yeah. does something new or yes. creative with it. Like yeah. obviously we like horror a lot. You know, we like Westerns. I like sci-fi. I like kind of the old like film noir type stuff. Um, it's just, there's something about that of like, a because I feel like 
you know, the modern Hollywood movie has that too, but they just don't acknowledge it. Yeah. Like the dumb comedy is like a genre, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's like, you get five movies a year that are basically exactly the same. Mm-hmm. They all have like the same cadence. They all have the same like camera style. They all have the same kind of general setup and flow and ebb and, you know, it's just, but the, the sort of more, I feel like a lot of the others allow for more creativity because if you're making a sci-fi movie in 2021, that's been done a lot for a long time. How do you do something that's still like initial, uh, some original and creative and interesting and all that. And to be able to, to sort of honor this tradition that you're being a part of while also introducing something new, I think is cool with some of these things that are like less in the mainstream. Yeah. And so I I have to applaud this one just for being like, like I I thought it was a good representation of like a modern Western. And I thought it was cool that they mixed in some horror elements, but I think it would have been more appropriately marketed as just a Western. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I I think the, so tying into like my, some of my frustrations with this film. And now I will say, Overall, like I, I enjoyed this film just because it was something yeah. a little bit different. But mm-hmm. um, the the other thing that was a little frustrating was I have trouble, and this is probably just like a personal thing, but like I have trouble with like because I've watched so many like older westerns just growing up, and like even now, like when I'm working in the garage or something, like I'll have you know Pell Riders playing or or you know Big Jake or you know I I just yeah. have those older ones. This one was too crisp for me. Like it almost seemed like a, a reality TV show in some places that, like with filming wise, and mm-hmm. it was just. And then like the addition of like Matthew Fox, and I don't know if it's because he's like reality, he, you know, he was like on Survivor. Or what I was just like kind of struggling with it because it was like, this is kind of a bummer. Like, like he didn't, didn't feel like authentic. Anyone? Could, yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's like, that was my thing of like, I wish it could have been a little bit more grainy, yeah. uh, which, you know, in the world of high def is a weird thing. I'm sure people don't want to, you know, think about, but it's like, it doesn't seem like it would be that much more to add that texture to the final mm-hmm. film to make it, you know, seem like it's not filmed on a TV set, you yeah. know, and just in, sure. in, in, you know, Southern California or wherever this was filmed that. It just, it just, that was the kind of my frustration. I was like, this is too crisp. There's, you, you're going to catch all the issues with, with this stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, um, you know, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily work out. But it, it, and so the last of my frustrations, I think, is the fact that they had, they have like a good idea. It just seems like no one can really make it as classic as it could be or as good as it could be like a Western horror film. Like there's, you don't have those every single day. Like the last one we did was the wind and the, you know, like it's like, it's like they, like you, you, I'm telling you right now, like if someone were to create like a, a 28 days later style zombie film in the days where they had to like, you know, uh, pack in, like the, the <laughs> muzzle, load. muzzle loaders <laughs> yeah. like that's you know that for me is intense because it's not just like hey let's put a clip in and yeah or magazine in and start shooting it's like shoot i gotta start you know pack it yeah. And yeah. it's just it, you know there's that idea out there that i think that in while you know we're doing this podcast i'm sure that that has to come into fruition mm-hmm. and it'll be like a game changer it'll be like a get out kind of thing but until yeah. then, we might just continue having some just like one off, you know. Oh, well, this is technically a horror, but it's in the Western, you know, it's like, yeah, get out of yeah. Here with that. Did, didn't feel quite as innovative as it could have, maybe. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Um, you mentioned something, it's been a little while ago now, but the about how you didn't even get to see the final showdown with Kurt Russell yeah. and the Indians. And that, that was one thing I noticed quite a bit through this movie is that there was a lot of violence that just happened off camera. Like you didn't actually see it. It was just kind of implied. And now that you said it was filmed in 21 days, it's like, okay, well they didn't have a lot of time for the setup of the special effects and stuff. But I think when they did, 
it was super effective. And I think the scene that probably stands out the most to anyone that's seen this is when they uh, they scalp Nick while he's still alive yeah. and then hack him in half and then eat him. Yep. That was super intense. It was uncomfortably convincing on the special effects side. And that was like straight up true balls to the wall horror. Mm -hmm. And that was a moment that I feel like they could have done more of in this movie. Like there were plenty of opportunities, but just seeing like they were capable of pulling it off is almost a little bit frustrating because it didn't happen more. Yeah. Yeah. Here's in, this is just like almost kind of a, like, I just wonder if this is the situation they put out, you know, this film or they're making this film and you know, like you said, there's like those random, it's like quick bits of like horror that they slip in there and then it's done. And it's, it, it goes back to talking. Yeah. Like part of my thinking with this is since it, I don't want to say it was like poorly made or anything, but part of, you know, maybe it's the quickness, like you were saying the 21 day or like I was telling about the 21 days. Um, I wonder if they have to put in the happy ending, you know, the, so to speak, the happy ending where, you know, uh, Patrick Wilson, Arthur finds his, find samantha yeah if they have to do that to kind of make up for the lack of actual horror or you know the to make up for some of the problems that they ran into while filming because like for me if i'm thinking about like what would make this a great horror it would be patrick wilson making it to the cave and seeing no one alive except for yeah. you know the the bad bad guys and like that's like the terror because he has the messed up leg, you know, just like yeah. that whole kind of thing. But like instead, they're like, "Well, we gotta make these people live um, to kind of make up for it." That's you know, I just if it was a true horror, that would I feel like that would be the case. And and if it was a western, the 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 action that I'm looking for at the end of the film is Kurt Russell just giving it to him all he has, yeah, and and not you know not making it out to make up for the horror side of it, if that makes any yeah. sense. No, for sure. And I, in general, I think that that was the horror that was in the movie was good, but there was so little of it compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. And I felt like a lot of the everything else was just completely extraneous to any purpose for the yeah. movie. Like the conversation about reading a book in the bathtub and maybe you could right. get like a conductor stand like they use at the orchestra. Like that whole thing, why? That, that was completely unnecessary and it didn't connect back to anything else, you know, that happened in any of it. And for a, a movie that was, you know, well over two hours, how much of it really contributed to accomplishing what the movie set out to accomplish yeah. versus just kind of diluted the mood? And I think that if I had been editing this one, there was a whole lot <laughs> that yeah. I would have taken out. And I think that it would have been a little bit more effective because the horror would have been more uh, like a larger percentage of the total runtime, mm -hmm. which would have kept you on your toes a little bit more as opposed to all the downtime in between. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So hire me Hollywood. <laughs> Same. Um, but like you were saying too, like before with that last fact, like the, the, blood and guts of this like i felt like that was good like that was oh yeah that's yeah the, the effects when they were there were great yeah yeah 100 percent. but you know i guess you can't win them all you know but yeah uh, we got to watch a western so yeah that yeah, was a win and you know this is this is us like watching it under like our podcast eyes like if it was just to watch to watch which i've done yeah. um it's a good film yeah, I don't mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I am glad that I watched it. I enjoyed it for the most part. I just, I feel like with this podcast, we're mostly focused on horror. And so a lot of times when a movie doesn't have a lot to offer in the horror department, we come across as kind of negative on it when really it may be a movie that we enjoyed. And that was definitely the case for me with this one. Yeah, basically what needs to happen is people who listen to this, the person who listens to this, they need to get out there and make a western horror film with our suggestions 
and you'll at least sell two tickets to this film. Indeed. Or two rentals on Amazon Prime Video. A hundred percent. You'll meet your hundred percent goal of two people watching it, and it'd be Daniel and me. Guaranteed. Daniel and I. Us. We. You us. Here's the last thing. This is about the film, but I just want to point out something you said earlier. Okay. You talked about the flow and the ebb. Yes. And ebb and flow is a lyric in a one, the Wonder Years song, Stained Glass Window. And yeah. it talks about John Wayne in that film, or in that song. Just thought I'd throw that out there. That's true, actually. Yeah. I was just listening to it on the way home. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. I love that album. Yeah, it's a good one. It's about death. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all I got about this one. Cool. Same. Uh, we'll be back next time with our final episode of season nine, which crazy that that's happening already. And in the meantime, if you haven't yet, if you could subscribe to this podcast on whatever device you use to listen to it, we would appreciate it. If you could leave us a review, that would be super cool. And if you want, check out our website, thehorrific.com. We have the lists of like the movies that we're doing for each season. We have some short horror stories if you want to read a little bit. And yeah. Welcome. And see you later. It's a new ending I'm working on. Nice.